Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Selling Greenville, your favorite real estate podcast here in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm your host, as always, Stan McCune, realtor right here in the Greenville area. You can find all of my contact information in the show notes if you need to reach out to me for any of your real estate needs here in the Greenville area of South Carolina. I can also refer you to agents outside of of the Greenville area um, all over the country and even outside the country as well. So please let me know if you have any real estate needs. Um, And just a reminder, as always, please uh, support the show. Even if you never use me as your realtor, if you're listening to this, I would greatly appreciate if you can subscribe to the show, hit the like button, download episodes, uh, leave a rating, leave a review, all of those good things. Um, That is a a great way to support this show, um, even if you don't ever uh, utilize me as your realtor. So I would appreciate that if you guys could do that. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about solar. Now, I've talked about solar a few times on here before, but this time, I actually personally have an, uh, uh, have had an experience with solar because I purchased a house that I ultimately flipped that had solar panels on it. Um, and honestly, I'm sure, I know that there has to be a few, but I don't know of any agents in Greenville that have ever owned a home with solar on it. Um, Now, like I said, there's like 4,000 agents in Greenville. Um, Surely some of them have at some point owned a home with solar. Um, But I'm just saying that I don't personally know of any. I think it's a pretty small pool. Um, And so I feel like I'm in a unique position here. But we've talked about solar a few times on here. um, And if you don't remember those episodes, or maybe you didn't listen or watch those episodes, I'm just going to summarize real quick the kind of big picture thoughts on solar that we've talked about before. For starters, solar is not particularly popular in Greenville for residential properties. Um, And a lot of that is just because people aren't used to seeing it. They think it looks ugly. um, And there's just a lot of confusion about how it works. There's confusion about um, how homeowners insurance companies handle solar. Um, And I've even learned that different insurance carriers handle uh, solar differently. As my phone starts to go off here. Um, Different insurance carriers handle uh, hand, handle solar differently, and there's confusion on that. I've heard that some require you to, you know, if you have a roof claim, you've got to remove the solar panels yourself, all sorts of, of different things like that. Um, and those are the sorts of things that you've got to work through if you're buying a home with solar panels on them, or if you're planning to install them yourself. Now, this is a great segue right here into uh, and into something with regard to insurance companies, specifically that Selling Greenville now has a sponsor, our second week of being sponsored by Piper Insurance Group, um, a great insurance company that I've used for uh, multiple homes in the past uh, and auto. They handle home, auto, and umbrella insurance policies. They can help you. Listen, Stephen Piper, great guy with, uh, with Piper Insurance Group. He can explain all the ins and outs of solar if you have specific questions for that. And he can quote it with different carriers, right? Because Piper Insurance Group is an independent insurance agency. They can quote from multiple different carriers and find the best one for you and the one that's the most solar friendly of the group. Um, They can help uh, with investment properties as well. So if you've got flips, rentals, ground up new construction, uh, residential, commercial, they can assist you with all of that. And they can assist you in South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia. Um, I, like I said, I would not have this company on the show if I didn't recommend them myself. I have used Piper Insurance Group and a lot of my clients have over the years. Great company, um, highly recommend them. So please look in the show notes to get their contact information as well. I will be including them in the show notes from here on as well. And uh, please reach out to them, give them some business. All right, only my second week announcing a sponsor, uh, but I'd say that was pretty smooth, right? It just segued right into the uh, homeowner's insurance the way they handle uh, solar and just straight into Piper Insurance Group. So I hope you guys appreciate that. And by the way, I will also be announcing a winner of an Amazon gift card for those who attended uh, my open house uh, that I had this past week. That was a little uh, incentive that I did just to just to have some fun. Um, so um, stay tuned. In the middle of this episode, I will be announcing the winner for that as well. That won't take too long. All right. Back to solar. So... There's another thing that we have discussed in the past when I have discussed solar on the show um, that is a, a major, major, major part of the solar discussion, 
and that is the price of solar solar panels are very very expensive prohibitively expensive in a lot of people's opinions right now usually tens of thousands of dollars depending on how many panels you get and and, and all of that um, and most people don't have the sort of money it takes in order to just buy them outright and so they end up having to purchase these panels with uh, with a loan uh, in order to be able to uh, to afford them and the result is you're paying this loan for who knows how long um, I think in some cases they make them like 30 year loans which is crazy um, and so unless you stay in the house for a li- really long period of time it takes a while before you start to see an actual return on your investment for the solar panels right uh, you won't see yourself uh, save money until you've saved enough money to offset the costs of the panels. And of course, that takes less time if you pay it up front versus having to get a loan with high interest and all of that. Um, I've heard some people say, uh, probably the shortest I've ever heard is is people say that it took them about seven or eight years to uh, to break even on their solar panels. Um, I've I've heard people say 20 years or or longer. Again, it depends on if you've got a loan, what your loan terms are, and all of that. But a lot of people won't stay in their home for seven years, um, and very few people will stay in their home for 20 years or more. Um, and so, for just a lot of people, it's not practical oftentimes to uh, to purchase solar panels, right? Unless you are very very confident this is your forever home, work isn't going to take you elsewhere, children, you know, lifestyle is not going to take you elsewhere. Um, that's that's the point at which it can make sense to purchase solar panels. But I recently purchased a home to flip, I already mentioned, that already had solar, right? And so I didn't have to install it. I wasn't taking on the loan and, and all of that. It already had the solar already on there. And I've helped, um, obviously, clients purchase homes with solar before. But this was my first personal experience with it. And I was a little bit nervous, right? Because I've seen so many instances where solar hurt the value of a home um, and, you know, I was buying this home to flip. And one thing, when when you flip homes, if, if you're a, a house flipper, you're listening to this, um, y- you know this to be true. You want to eliminate all potential things that could discourage a potential buyer. So, you know, in the ideal world, y- you just want a home that that is just clean, that doesn't have solar panels and pools and, and you know, knob and tube electrical, um, you know, like weird anomalies like that you want to try to avoid those things if at all possible um and of course in this case i didn't have that choice i either wanted to get the home i my choices were to either pass on the home or to get it with solar panels um and i felt like it was worth the risk i wasn't as concerned as i have been in some instances because a they did have a loan on the solar panels but that loan was going to be paid off at closing and this is one of the things Excuse me. This is one of the things that could be a major issue with solar panels in general is that when people take on these loans and then they need to move, sometimes they don't have the money to pay the solar loans off at closing because they don't have enough equity in their home. And so they're hoping that the new owner is willing to take on the loan for the solar, assuming that it's even transferable to begin with. Um, But because solar isn't that popular in Greenville right now, a lot of people aren't willing to pay extra for solar panels, right? So they expect those panels to be paid off at closing. And so the seller needs to have enough equity in their home to be able to afford that. Um, And the solar companies usually end up putting a lien on the house uh, for the loan that they have. It's called a uh, a UCC filing. We'll we'll discuss that here uh, a little bit later. Um, And so if the uh, the lien and the loan is not paid off at closing, you have that lien that is essentially a title defect on the property, which is not good, obviously. Um, and again, that's not something people want. They don't want a lien on, on a property that they're buying. They want it to have a clean title. No, no liens outside of liens that they are opening as a result of, of their own loans. Um, so having that solar loan paid off at closing was obviously very important to me. And additionally... Um, the other thing that you hear people complain about most frequently with solar, I've already alluded to this, but it's how ugly they are, right? They, they don't look great. People are used to seeing a nice clean roof line. They don't want to see those solar panels just sitting there. And in this case, in, uh, with regard to this house, it was less of a concern because the solar panels were on the back slope of the roof. And so unless you were in the backyard, you didn't even see the panels. And it's honestly really hilarious how funny people are 
um, about how little they care about how the back of their house looks, right? All they care about is how that how the front looks to their neighbors. I even uh, one time uh, saw a property that had been resided, but only had been resided in the front, and the the siding in the back of the house was awful. It was off this awful deteriorating wood siding, and they had done vinyl just on the front to to look good to their neighbors and whatnot. Um, so anyway. All that I'm saying is the, the I was less concerned about the complaint about or the potential complaint about the solar panels being ugly because they were only going to be visible from the backyard. So I purchased the home again. The panels were paid off and all of that when I purchased it. But now I have to have the the service for the panels transferred into my name. And I don't know why, but the panels for some reason had been di- had been disconnected by the previous owner, so they weren't even taking advantage. Of the panels, but uh, but I wanted to try them out. Otherwise, how would I be able to give you guys this uh, fantastically engaging content, right? I had to have this experience, uh, if for no other reason than to uh, have more content to give to you guys. So I got a bunch of info on the panels. I took a gazillion pictures of uh, whatever the boxes that connects to the panels. I don't even know the proper terminology. Um, uh, and then I called Duke Energy the electricity provider, and spoke to their renewables department. Now, Duke Energy is not the most well-run utility provider, and I was honestly dreading this call, but I was pleasantly surprised that the renewables department had a a very helpful person uh, that was able to kind of guide me through what I needed to do. She sent me an email with specifics on what I needed to fill out to turn the solar on in my name and all of that. Now, when I first got the paperwork, it was admittedly a bit confusing. Um, there's a lot of specifics on, you know, what type of solar panels I had. And I don't know, there's just a lot of questions. I was just like, wow, I really don't know the answer to this. And um, I had to to attempt the paperwork a few different times before getting it right. But in the end, I actually realized that because Duke had already had this these solar panels in their system, they actually knew exactly what I needed to do. It's kind of silly that I even had to fill out the paperwork. I get it. I understand you know, that they, they're already, Duke Energy is already very busy. Um, and so they don't want to, you know, fill out the paperwork for people um, on the, their behalf. They want you to fill it out to take the burden off of them. Uh, but I was able to get the information I need in order to help me fill out that paperwork just by calling back the renewables department, asking a few questions. They had every answer that I needed right there on file. So, Filled that out, signed the paperwork, sent it in, um, and then within not very much time, um, I uh, got those solar panels turned on. It was very easy. I didn't have to be there. I didn't have to be at the house. I didn't have to do anything special. They told me to make sure that they were connected. I didn't even know if they were connected or not, so I just assumed that they were, um, and they were, um, and uh, and all of this was able to be done remotely. I didn't, you know, I could have done it all from being completely out of town if I wanted to. So I was pleasantly surprised by all of that. Um, okay. Now, we're about to... I'm, I'm going to get into more details. I've got a lot more to say about the story. But before we get into that, we are going to announce a winner for a $50 Amazon gift card. These are people who um, came to my open house over the weekend uh, that I had at a listing at 318 East Blue Ridge Drive in Cherrydale. Very unique property. It's a standalone two bedroom one bath house with a full accessory dwelling unit in the back that has a heated and cooled apartment on the base level and then upstairs has a um, has storage space that could in theory be finished and uh, anyway great house check it out 318 East Blue Ridge um, had a great open house um, had had several people that attended a lot of interest and um, and we had some people that I told would be entered into drawing and that would need to Listen to this episode to see who won. So if you're watching on YouTube, I'm actually going to spin a wheel with some names. And we're going to see who actually uh, won this $50 Amazon gift card. The winner is Joel Mangin. Joel Mangin has won the uh, $50 Amazon gift card. Joel, um, if you're listening, the rules of the game are that you need to text me from the phone number uh, that you had put on my sign-up sheet. All right, thank you guys for enjoying that. Joel, text me that you know that you won, and um, and then I'll send you that that fifty-dollar gift card. All right, back to solar. 
The big question in my mind was, you know, after having gone through the whole process, right, I, um, you know, I, I closed on this house, the solar was paid off at closing, um, I now have gone through the process of getting it transferred into my name. Now the question is, of course, what will be the monthly savings, you know, like, ha what kind of impact can I actually expect from these solar panels? And this is a pretty big house, 2,500 square feet, very tall ceilings, um, the AC is running on electricity, um, and again, this was, there, there was plenty of hot days. Um, in fact, when I first bought the house, at, at one point, I, there was something that I was having an issue with. It ended up just being that my thermostat, it, the house had two thermostats, and the thermostat was just set upstairs incorrectly. It didn't match downstairs. Um, but there was at one point where the AC wasn't on because the upstairs thermostat was set to off, and the house was hot. So it wasn't just, you know, we weren't in a situation where it was, you know, the time of year where not a whole lot of electricity is being used. This is a time of year when a lot of electricity was being used. And I, I own rental properties and I flip houses. I've got my own house. And based on what other homes that I own uh, were paying for electricity, I would have expected my bill for this specific house to be, you know, kind of in the low to mid 100s per month, most likely, just based on, based on usage, what it costs to cool it, all that kind of stuff. What did my bills end up being? $43, $37, $25, $33, $25. Those were my five bills were all $43 or less, um, and three of them were $33 or less. Now, that to me is pretty incredible, right? Um, I was actually paying more for my water bill than for my energy bill, even though I was using almost no water, right? This was a, a flip house. You don't use a whole lot of water in a flip house, but I was paying more money for my water bill than my electricity. So it seems to me that the cost savings was actually really substantial. I would say at least $100 per month, if not maybe $125 uh, or more per month. Like to, be, to have a 2,500 square foot house with a $25 energy bill, like that's no joke. Um, and that wasn't my first bill. That was like right in the middle of it all. Um, so uh, that was that was pretty impressive. The solar panels definitely had a big, big impact. I didn't have any issues with insurance or anything like that. Um, although, granted, I didn't have to make a, make a claim at all. Um, but there were no problems in terms of getting insurance on the property or anything of that nature. And I should mention as well that I had to decide when pricing the home, right? After I'd done the whole flip. Now I have to decide, and and I, on, obviously before I did the flip, I was trying to figure out how I was going to price the home, right? That's not something that you wait until the end to decide. You have to figure that out on the front end when you're flipping a house. And uh, so I, I was trying to figure out how do these solar panels impact the price? I've already said that they, they can impact the value negatively, right? If people think they're ugly and they don't want to deal with them, um, they can really be a problem. And I've, I've seen situations where homes sell for way less than what they would have sold for had they not had solar. So I had to think about that. Is there a possibility that these panels could decrease the value of the house? Um, and um, Or on the flip side, might they actually increase the value of the house in one way or another? Well, I decided that based on the fact that they were not in, you know, that the loan on them was paid off. There's no loan on these panels. And they weren't in an ugly, prominent location on the house. I concluded that I didn't think that they were going to decrease the value. Um, but I didn't really think they were going to increase the value of the house either. Again, this isn't California. In California, it would have been a, a would have had an impact, I think, a positive impact, probably in some other states as well. Um, but in South Carolina, there's just not enough people looking for solar panels for it to be uh, a boon on your property value, right? It's got to be someone looking for solar panels, very small portion of the market, probably less than 5% of the market. Um, and then they also have to be looking in that specific neighborhood for that specific type of home. It's just hard to find that buyer. So what I ended up doing is I ended up pricing the home as if it didn't have solar, right? Because if you were looking at the home from almost every angle, you wouldn't see it. It's kind of an out of sight, out of mind thing. Um, and so my assumption is basically it wouldn't be a big selling point, but it also wouldn't be a big detraction. Um, and I ended up being right. When people were looking at the house, nobody left feedback that they wanted solar. So I didn't have anyone that was like, you know, we were really looking at this house specifically because it has solar, but the house itself didn't work for us. I didn't get any of that. 
On the flip side, nobody complained about the look of the solar panels as they frequently do. Again, because it wasn't in the front of the house, it didn't affect the, the home's curb appeal. Now, I did have someone... Who, an agent that came through that left feedback that said that their client didn't want to mess with solar and didn't want the house because of that. Um, And uh, in other words, they, they just, they didn't know what, you know, exactly what owning a house with solar entailed. And it was just enough of an uncertainty for them. They just didn't want to mess with it. I think had they really loved the house, they would have made it work. Right. I just think this is a situation where they probably didn't love the house and the solar was just one of those things that was just like, yeah, I'm definitely not going to consider it because I, I don't, I already don't love the house, but the solar is just kind of like, yeah, I, I don't need one more thing to think about. Um, so I don't think the solar was exactly what scared off those people. Uh, it was just a factor. Um, but generally speaking, it was not a factor for most people. And in the end, it didn't take long at all for me to get this home under contract. Granted, it was a great neighborhood, uh, not an old home. It was, this was, and, and the, the flip we did was great. Um, it, so everything in this house uh, was was really pristine. It showed really well. Um, and and so, yeah, it, it, we had got a buyer that wasn't specifically looking for solar, but also wasn't turned off by the panels. They liked everything else about the house. And so having the solar was, I think, just kind of a, okay, you know, whatever, not a big deal one way or the other. Um, and uh, so that was great. Got the home under contract. Um, I had to provide some information on solar to the agent, uh, the buyer's agent. Um, but otherwise, it went pretty smoothly until uh, really right at the very end. So right at the very end, I get an email from the closing attorney that Sunrun, the company, the solar company uh, that you know was, I guess, the one that originally provided the loan on the solar panels, um, they had put a lien on the house, as I'd already said, but they hadn't released their UCC filing. That stands for Uniform Commercial Code, um, if, if you really want to get in the weeds there. Uh, but long story short, basically, to the buyer's attorney, there was still the possibility of a lien being on the home because they didn't have this UCC filing released yet by Sunrun. Now, when I had purchased the home, part of the deal for me to get the home at the price uh, that I was purchasing it at, you know, a price that allowed me to have some margin to flip it, was that I had to use the seller's closing attorney. So I wasn't using, you know, when I purchased it, and usually the buyer determines the closing attorney in South Carolina. In this case, I was not able to do that because part of the condition of me getting the home for the price I got it at was using the seller's closing attorney. Um, No big deal. It was a well-known closing attorney. Um, But obviously, when they issued the title insurance to me uh, and, and, you know, stating that it was a clear title, um, they did that despite me not having that UCC filing released yet. Um, and there wasn't anything inherently wrong with that. Um, not particularly uncommon. But then when the new buyer's attorney requested it months later, it was clear that the attorney who was involved when I purchased the home had not closed the loop with Sunrun. So that was a little bit annoying to me, right? It was like I understood that they, they didn't have everything in place necessarily when I purchased the home because... The, the process with Sunrun is they needed to see, uh, the, you know, they need to actually receive their payment, uh, which was something that was done at closing in order for them to, to release the lien. But then the fact the closing attorney didn't follow up at some point for several months um, in order to get that completed, that was a little bit annoying. And that caused a little bit of sweat right, up the, right at the end of the transaction uh, because we were starting to get close to the closing date. And it wasn't clear to me if we would actually get this UCC released in time. Um, and I had never dealt with Sunrun, um, but I had owned this house now for several months. And so it was kind of like, well, if it hasn't been taken care of yet, then are we going to really pull this together in the last few days of the transaction? Well, thankfully, the answer was yes. The previous closing attorney realized the urgency of the situation. I communicated the urgency of the situation. Um, and uh, they can, you know, a closing attorney can can kind of get in trouble in situations like this because I could make a title insurance claim against them. And that would be something of them. They would have to deal with with the title company that issued uh, or the title insurance company that issued the policy that would come back on the closing attorney and and kind of be a a black spot on their uh, title insurance record. And title insurance companies, closing attorneys in South Carolina, they do not want that. Um, Now, I never threatened that or anything, um, but for sure, that was a back pocket option 
um, if this never got resolved. Thankfully, I've never had to do that before. I don't even know, you know, what all is involved with that. Um, but this is why the closing attorneys do have a little bit of skin in the game to ensure that these things get taken care of, thankfully. Um, long story short, though, it all got resolved. I was able to sell it. It ended up uh, not being a problem, just causing a, li a, a little bit of extra sweat and a little bit of extra work at the end. So, in the end, it all worked out, and, and I learned a lot. So, to summarize, a um, few bullet points here. Setting up service with solar it is a little bit intimidating, I'll be honest, but it's a lot easier than you might think. It was a lot easier than I thought. It was just the paperwork, the power company um, in the area, you know, in this case, Duke Energy, they were able to... They, they already had info on it because these were not new solar panels. These were older solar panels that they had already uh, had uh, past history with. And so it, they were able to help me with that. Um, additionally, big takeaway that I've already mentioned, but to summarize, people perceive solar panels and the way they look much differently if they're on the back of the house versus the front. I think this is really, really important. I know that you know if you're installing solar, you don't necessarily have in a lot of instances, a choice of where to install them because it's all about where the sun is is getting the most exposure to the roof. Um, but if you can, if you have the choice of front or back, back 100% of the time, put them on the back if that's an option. Um, obviously, you know we've talked about these loans are um, are a problem, um, and uh, you know even paying them off. Um, and, and offering a home that has solar panels free and clear um, and that aren't in a, uh, a prominent location, you know, they're tucked away. We can safely conclude, because again, I had this happen, that people still avoid a house with solar just because they don't understand it. Um, and there, again, there just aren't enough people specifically looking for solar in the upstate currently to, uh, to make it to where that's a selling point. And something that uh, that increases the value. Another point here, again, just in review, um, you get a home paid off with solar panels, with panels that are paid off, a clear title and everything. There may still be a lien or UCC filing that needs to be removed um, post closing that will require follow up. That was probably my biggest takeaway was that, in hindsight, um, I just thought that that Sunrun thing was going to be taken care of. I needed to go back to my closing attorney. And, and close the loop with them to, you know, to let them know, hey, I'm flipping this house. I need this to be taken care of ASAP. And lastly, um, again, I had no idea what to expect, but there are real cost savings with solar. Now, was did the previous owner ever see cost savings? I don't think so. I mean, they weren't even using the solar panels. They had them completely shut off. Uh, but for me and for the new owner, if they opt to, to transfer service into their name, um, not having had to pay for the solar panels, right? Just getting them essentially for free. So they were subsidized by the previous owner. Now it's just pocketing the savings. And we're talking about potentially, I mean, based on what I experienced, over $1,000 per year of savings. That's a sizable amount of savings, right? Now, again, if you paid $25,000 for your solar panels and you're only saving $1,000 a year, it's going to take you 25 years to, to recoup your money. Um, but, um, again, in this case, that's the previous owner. That's a mistake that the previous owner made. They probably never broke even on that purchase. And that's why you've got to be careful, uh, when you're looking at solar. So there you have it. My definitive experience on solar. I hope that that was helpful for you guys to, to clarify, um, some of the ins and outs of actually owning solar. And if you want to discuss that more, if you have any further questions, I'm happy to answer those my contact information is in the show notes. Piper Insurance Group uh, is also in the show notes if you need to reach out to them for any of your uh, homeowners, auto, umbrella insurance needs. Please like, rate, review, subscribe, all those good things to the show. And we will talk again next time. 